we're in business. Uh, I hope you're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning. I, in this cold, I don't know how you could be anything else. But And from the sound of the singing, you're in good voice. So what's going to happen here is uh, you're going to shout, shout these answers to me. All I'm going to do is signal you and give you some prompts and take you through this. We're going to take it in pieces. And uh, so it'll take probably a normal message time to practice it all. But when we're done, we'll go through the entire chronology of the Old Covenant in about four minutes. And you'll know how everything connects together. And uh, as Pastor mentioned, he's been in the book of, of Exodus. And uh, wherever you are in the Old Testament, I hope this will help you to, um, to understand what's happening uh, by knowing what went before, wherever you're reading, if you're reading in the book of Judges or in Joshua or wherever you might be. And... Uh, you'll have a better understanding about how everything connects. All right, now I have some introductions to make this morning. You know these people here as Ed and Kim Tracy. Not this morning. This is Adam and Eve. All right, and when I, when I, come, when I come over and do this, you're going to say Adam and Eve. And I want to hear it loud, all right? We want to shake up the neighbors here and l let them know there's something happening over here, all right? Now, uh, uh, you, you know these young men uh, as uh, the, the, the Todd's young guys, all right? And um, uh, Jake and David. And uh, so when I come over here and do this to Jake and David, uh, they're, they're not Jake and David today. They're Cain and Abel. Now, I didn't want to assign... <laughs> I... I I didn't want to assign the, uh, which one was going to be which, because, you know, Cain wasn't a very good guy, right? But David just volunteered. <laughs> how, how good is that? So, all right? So, and we're going to have all kinds of prompts and things to, for you to uh, shout the answers back to me. So that, uh, when I do this, it's Adam and Eve. When I motion to these two, it's Cain and Abel. All right? And uh, so... Let's get warmed up a little bit. Uh, don't worry about me with no coat. I'll be plenty warm in a couple minutes here So from moving around up here. So uh, uh, let, we'll start out with the books of the Bible. All right? Who remembers how many books in the Bible? 66. Uh, most of you, that's good. I have to you know, rework it from time to time and remember that. All right, now, for those of you who are familiar with Jack Benny, the next question is easy. How many books in the Old Testament? 39, right? Jack Benny, every year when he, you know, when he turned 60, when he turned 65, when he turned 70, they'd ask him how old he was, and he was always 39. So, um, all right, now if you do the math, then, how many books in the New Testament? 27, right? 66 books in the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, uh, 27 in the New Testament. All right, let's do that much and get in the mood for this, all right? Are you all ready? All right, here we go. How many books in the Bible, class? How many in the Old Covenant? 39. How many in the New Testament? 27. Perfect. That's the way this whole thing is going to go. All right? And the more that you vocalize, the more you're going to remember. So I would really encourage you to do that. Um, all right. Now, the entire chronology of the um, Old Testament is contained in 11 books. Now, I'm gonna, there's going to be some numbers I have to indicate to you, and I'm going to do that with my fingers. And uh, I'm in good shape up to 10, of course. But beyond that, I need a little help. So uh, for this, this one, about, when I ask you how many uh, books are in the chronology, I've got to bring an ear into, into play here. So this is 11. And we're going to have a couple times when I'm going to, have to, when I'm going to need 12. So then I've got to bring the other ear in. And I'm going to look like a wounded moose, but, you know, you play along and... Um, so I'll prompt you with these kind of things along the way. All right, so uh, the entire old uh, chronology of the Old Testament is contained in how many books? Eleven. Eleven. Now, right away, you, you probably have questions because um, we just said there's 39 books in the Old Testament, and now the entire chronology is contained within 11 of them. All right, and we'll talk about that as we go along. All right, now, what's the abbreviation for Genesis? That's easy, right? G-E-N. Those are the starting letters of the first three books. So if you remember G-E-N, the abbreviation for Genesis, you've got that 
locked in. Okay, the G stands for? Genesis. Genesis. How about the E? Exodus. Okay, and the N? Numbers. Numbers. Very good. All right, so we got three of the 11 already. Now, uh, the next two are easy because they each start with a J. And I'll do this for you, uh, for the J. What would the first J be? Joshua. Very good. How about the second J? Judges. Excellent. All right. So Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, and Judges. Now the next four are a pair, pairs of first and seconds. We have first and second Samuel and first and second Kings. And that only leaves two left. And that's Ezra and Nehemiah. And that's the entire 11 books. All right. So let's start at the beginning and let's go that far. You ready? All right. How many books in the Bible, class? How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? 27. The entire chronology of the Old Testament is contained in how many books? 11. Those books are Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Excellent. Very good. Okay, now, we'll, if you missed some of that, we'll have a chance to go back and we'll go over those again. Um, all right, now, the... Uh, the details of this chronology, beginning with the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 is, and I'm going to make, do this with my hands, like God creating, creating the earth, all right? So Genesis chapter 1 is about creation. So I'll do this and you'll say creation. Now Genesis chapter 2 is also creation, but there's a lot more detail. For instance, uh, uh, God created three or four rivers, Man was created, uh, the trees and the herbs of the field were created, and the cattle, and, and so on and so forth. So there's, there's a lot of detail. And we'll call those special events. So for chapter 2 in Genesis, I'll, I'll do special events of creation, like that. I'll put little quotes on that, all right? Now, chapter 3 is... I didn't hear much. Ah, thank you, all right? And chapter 4... Cain and Abel. All right. Now, chapter 5 is easy, and chapter 10, because f chapter 5 and 10 is genealogies. Chapter 5, and I'll do this, is the genealogies of Adam. So you'll say the genealogies of Adam, right, for chapter 5. All right, now, chapter 6, 7, and 8 is Noah during the flood. So I'll do this, he's out on the ocean. All right, and then chapter 9 is Noah after the flood. So that part you're going to have to remember a little bit, but you'll get a chance to work through it. Okay, then chapter 10, I said, was more genealogies, and that would be of who? Noah. Chapter 10 is the genealogies of Noah. Okay, now, in chapter 11, the language was, languages were confused because they were building the what? Tower of Babel, right? And chapter 12 is the call of who? Abraham, right? It's the call of Abraham. So that's the 12, first 12 chapters of Genesis as we get into the detail. All right, let's practice that much. We'll start with Genesis chapter 1. The detail beginning with Genesis chapter 1 is, chapter 1 is creation. creation. Chapter 2, special events of creation. Chapter 3, Adam, Adam and Eve. Chapter 4, Cain and Abel. All right, chapter 5, genealogies of Adam. All right, chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah during the flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, the genealogies of Noah. Chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. Chapter 12, Call of Abraham. Very good. All right, let's uh, start at the beginning, and we'll go that far. You ready? And you'll get, get, you'll get to really sock this in. All right? Here we go. How many books in the Bible, class? 66. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? The entire chronology of the Old Testament is contained in how many books? Eleven. Those books are Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, and Nehemiah. The detail of this chronology, beginning in Genesis, it goes like this. Genesis chapter 1, creation. Chapter 2, special events of creation. Chapter 3, chapter 4, Chapter 5, the genealogies of Adam. Chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah during the flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, the genealogies of Noah. Chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. Chapter 12, call of Abraham. All right, I don't want to hear fading now. 
If anything, we need to get louder, okay? So uh, you're doing really well. All right, how's it going so far? All right? Working? Okay, good. Now, when God called Abraham, he told him two things. What were they? What did he tell Abraham? Go to a land that what? I will show thee. And isn't that the way our lives are as Christians? He never tells us in advance necessarily what he's going to do. He just expects us to obey him by faith. So that starts right off with Abraham. Go to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Right? So when God called Abraham, he told him what? Go to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Excellent. Okay. Uh, now, so... Abraham packed his bags. You're going to say, Abraham packed his bags. He travels light, doesn't he? I mean, he's got a long way to go. and he's All right? Abraham packed his bags, and then, I'll get my pointer out here. Um, here's Israel and Judah, and uh, we're going to have a lot to say about them, of course. And uh, here's Ur of the Chaldees, where Abraham started out from. And he's going to travel north to this city called Haran up here. And this whole area is known as the Fertile Crescent in here. And it's called the Fertile Crescent because of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which every spring would overflow their banks and it would make this very fertile cropland. So when Abraham... Uh, so I'm going to motion to this and... Uh, we're going to say, so Abraham did what? Packed his bags and traveled up the Fertile Crescent. Okay? Traveled up the Fertile Crescent. And uh, now, uh, he's, he's going to arrive at Haran. And um, uh, that's H-A-R-A-N. And I'm going to have a little prompt for you to remember that. I'm going to pull on a tuft of my hair. And then I'm going to do this, like somebody running, all right? Hair ran, all right, to remind you, all right? Now, uh, something about Heron being way up here, being way up here, Heron is a little north of the Fertile Crescent. It's just north of it. Things dry out up here, and it's very desert-like. In fact, it's, it's known as a barren place. Now... Over here, we have, we have our brother Ed, and uh, he's a fine guy, and we love him here, and Ed, but Ed is a little bit domish up here, right? The things are a little sparse up, up here, right? Just a little bit, right? So when I say uh, uh, Abraham packed his bags, he traveled up the Fertile Crescent to Haran, and then, which was barren? And I'm going to point to Ed's head. <laughs> All right? He's being such a good sport. By the way, Ed, uh, Don Bavard is back there going, phew, I'm glad he didn't choose me. <laughs> God only makes so many perfect heads rest covered with hair. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay? So, uh, let's try that. So, Abraham packed, packed his bags, bags, traveled up the two... Which was? Barren. Excellent. All right. Now, the next part is pretty easy, too. I'm going to pretend I have a salt shaker, and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to say, the people that traveled with Abraham form the word salt. You're going to say salt. Okay? So I'll prompt you with that. Now, salt, uh, the, the S stand, who would the S stand for? Sarah. And uh, the A? Abraham. How about L? Lot. Who was Lot to Abraham? His nephew. Okay. And uh, the, who, who, who's the T? Terah. Very good. Uh, that, that's not as well known. Terah is Abraham's what? His father. Yeah. Terah is Abraham's father. So the people that traveled with Abraham sp spell the word salt. And salt stands for Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Terah. All right. Now, they lived in Haran for 30 years 
until Tara died. And I'll be doing a lot of that through this, all right? Um, all right, let's back up to the uh, books of chronology, and we'll go through the, the 12 chapters of Genesis, and we'll work up to this far. And we'll, we'll practice all of this, all right? I think we've got the books of the Bible down at this point, so we'll skip that. All right? The entire chronology of the Old Testament is contained in how many books? Eleven. Eleven. Those books are Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, Ezra, and Nehemiah. The detail in this chronology in, uh, begins in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 is creation. Chapter 2, special events of creation. Chapter 3, Adam and Eve. Chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Chapter 5, the genealogies of Adam. Chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah during the flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, the genealogies of Noah. Chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. Chapter 12, the call of Abraham. Now, when God called Abraham, he told him what? Go to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a... Uh, so Abraham hecked his bag, traveled up the, to Haran, which was barren. The people that traveled with Abraham formed the word salt. Salt stands for Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Terah. They lived in Haran how many years? Until Terah. Wonderful. How's it going so far? Good. It's easy, right? Okay. We connect it all together. All right, now. After Terah died, Sarah, Abraham, and Lot moved to Canaan. Now, Canaan is, of course, where Israel eventually wound up, but it wasn't known as Israel until they conquered the land. So it was called Canaan. So after Terah died, Sarah, Abraham, and Lot moved to Canaan. And uh, when they got to Canaan, um, God, there came a point where God told Abraham and Sarah, that you're going to have the chosen seed. You're going to have the chosen child, the, the son. And they were all on board with that. Is that right? They trusted God by faith and said, okay, fine. I mean, Abraham's 100 years old, and I'm 90, but we, did they have the faith? What did they do? What did Sarah do? She laughed. Abraham did too. Um, so uh, Sarah made a deal with Hagar, right, her handmaid. And Abraham and Hagar begot who? Ishmael, right? Who, do you, who did Sarah and A, or Abraham and Hagar beget? Ishmael. Ishmael, good. Was Ishmael the son of promise? No. Now, it took 14 years before uh, Sarah and Abraham developed the faith to do it God's way. So, after 14 years, uh, Sarah and Abraham begat who? Isaac, right. So, was Ishmael the son of promise? No. Was Isaac the son of promise? Yes. Okay. Isaac and Rebekah begat who? Jacob, the twins, right? Jacob and Esau. Was Esau the son of promise? No. Sold his birthright for a bowl of stew, right? Uh, was Jacob the son of promise? Yes. Okay. Now, Jacob had how many sons? And here's the moose. Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. All right. Twelve sons. And he also had a daughter. Now, we're going to talk about one of his sons in particular in a moment, but we've got to figure out this daughter. Now, you may know it. If you do, don't, don't shout it out. Wait till I, we'll do it all together. But um, uh, if you don't know who his daughter is, I'm telling you, you actually do. All right? You know who it is. And when I prompt you, I want you all to shout it out. All right? Are you ready? Someone's in the kitchen with... Excellent. Let's try it again. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. All right. So um, Jacob had how many sons? And a daughter named Dinah. Very good. Now, one of his sons was who? Joseph, who had the... I'm already getting warm up here. You, you all look so warm in your coats. Joseph, who had the coat of many colors. All right. Now... What happened to Joseph? This, now, this is one you're going to have to, this is a long one you're going to have to remember. I'm going to say, what happened to Joseph? And you're going to shout back to me, he was sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. All right, let's practice that. All together, 
He was sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. All right. So you'll just, when I say what happened to Joseph, it's all yours, okay? And uh, it, you'll, it'll eventually come together for you. Um, now, but Joseph prospered in Egypt for 30 years. And you're going to say, I'm going to say, but Joseph prospered in Egypt for how long? And you'll say 30 years, all right? Then there came a famine in the land, and Jacob and the rest of the Israelites moved where? To Egypt to get food. So you'll just say Egypt in that dialogue. I'll say the rest, and then I'll do this, and you'll say food, all right? And that's how, that's how Israel got to Egypt. And that sometimes is a missing link that uh, you try to very well in Genesis, you know, and they're in bondage for 400 years, and how'd they get there? And that's how it happened. Now, it started out with only 75 people, but of course, in the, course, in, in the time of 400 years, uh, they had multiplied greatly. All right, so let's go back to the details of the chronology in the first 12 chapters of Genesis, and let's go that far. Let's see how we do. Are you ready? Okay, the details of, the, of those 11 books of chronology, beginning with Genesis, chapter 1, is creation. Chapter 2, special events of creation. Chapter 3, Adam and Eve. chapter 4, Cain and Abel. chapter 5, of Adam. Chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah during the flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, the genealogies of Noah. Chapter 11, Tower of Babel. Chapter 12, Call of Abraham. When God called Abraham, what did he tell him? Go to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee great nation. So Abraham packed his bags, traveled up the to Haran, which was Haran. The people that traveled with Abraham formed the word salt. Salt stands for Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Terah. They lived in Haran how many years? Until Terah. After Terah died, where'd they moved? Canaan. When they got to Canaan, Sarah and Abraham had a problem. Now, here's where you can just say no kids, right? Sarah and Abraham had a problem. What was it? No kids. So, uh, uh, Abraham and Hagar begat who? Was Ishmael the son of promise? No. Fourteen years later, Sarah and Abraham begat who? Isaac. Was Isaac the son of promise? Yes. Isaac and Rebekah begot the twins, Jacob and Esau. Was Esau the son of promise? No. Was Jacob the son of promise? Yes. Jacob had how many sons? And a daughter named? One of his sons' name was? Who had the? Many. What happened to Joseph? He was sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. But Joseph prospered in Egypt for how many years? Then there was a famine in the land, and Jacob and the rest of the Israelites were forced to move where? To get? Okay. Is that it? Did we get that far? That's as far as we got, I think. All right. Um, now, then after, the, after they get to Egypt, then Pharaoh died. All right. And the new Pharaoh was fearful of the children of Israel, was fearful of the children of Israel, and so he placed them in for how many years? 400 years. Okay? Then God raised up who? What did Moses tell Pharaoh? Let my people go. Did he let them go? So God caused the miracle, brought the miracles of, miracle of the what? The plagues. Right? He brought the miracle of the plagues. After the plagues, what did Pharaoh say? Go, right? So uh, after Pharaoh, the first Pharaoh died, the new Pharaoh was fearful of the children of Israel, so he placed them in for how many years? All right. Then God raised up Moses. What did Moses tell Pharaoh? My people go. Did he let them go? No. Uh, so God caused the miracle of the... After the plagues, what did Pharaoh say? Go. So Moses led the children of Israel across the Red Sea to Mount Sinai, where they received the law. Now, let's talk a minute about these missing books. See, we went Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, and then we went Joshua, Judges, and First and Second Samuel, and First and Second Kings, and Ezra and Nehemiah, and we skipped Leviticus, right? We skipped Deuteronomy, all right, for instance. 
And uh, now the prophets all came along side as Israel was going through its, the course of its history to encourage, to admonish, to warn them, and, 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 to, and uh, to encourage them to righteousness and so on. So that's pretty easy. But uh, uh, Leviticus was written at the foot of Mount Sinai when, after they got the law. They spent two years there uh, studying the law, the children of Israel. And uh, they had a long way to come because you remember when Moses came down off the mountain and he, here they are with the golden calf, you know, that Aaron uh, got, uh, encouraged them to get going with and so on. So they spent two years there. Now, we know they spent 40 years in the wilderness, but this was the first two years. So when we get to the spies in a couple of minutes and uh, their rejection of, of, of taking that, of not going into the land, God caused them to wander in the wilderness, not 40 now, because they've already been there too, at the foot of Mount Sinai, another 38 years, all right? So it, t it totals up to 40. All right, so Leviticus was written, sitting right there at the foot of Mount Sinai, so there was no movement, you know, there's no uh, chronology here. All right, now Deuteronomy, Moses wrote in about two months' time, when they were right near the border of Canaan, ready to send the spies out. And uh, ready, for, you know, and Joshua eventually, of course, led them across. Um, but there's no chronology there either. And, and it was a reminder, a refresher for Israel of God's statutes. And uh, you can see that, that it was kind of a repeat of, of a lot of the law because, for instance, the Ten Commandments appear both in Exodus and in Deuteronomy. So there's a lot of duplication. There's a lot of extra things and so on. So that's what that was. All right. Now, um, uh, where did we stop? Uh, we were at, um, yeah, let's go into Egypt, uh, let's, let's go with the famine, and uh, into Egypt, uh, with, with uh, Jacob and the rest of the Israelites coming down to Egypt, and then what happened after they got there for food, right? Then what happened? Pharaoh died. Uh, the new Pharaoh was f fearful of the children of Israel, so he placed them in bondage for how many years? 400 years. All right. Uh, then God raised up. Moses. What did Moses tell Pharaoh? Let my go. Did he let him go? So then God caused the miracle of the? After the plagues, what did Pharaoh say? Go. So Moses led the children of Israel across the Red Sea to Mount Sinai, where they received the law. After two years studying the law, uh, Moses led the children of Israel northward to, let me get my pointer out, I'm under Jacob's coat here, or Joseph's coat, uh, northward to, it's on here somewhere, uh, Kadesh Barnea. So you're going to have to remember Kadesh Barnea. And you're right at the top of the Red Sea here. Here's Canaan. And uh, so you're right on the, the border of going into the Promised Land. All right, so uh, after they were at Mount Sinai, then Moses led the children of Israel where? To Kadesh Barnea. Then he sent out the 12 spies. Okay, the spies came back and said there's giants in the land. All right. How many of the spies said go? Two. How many of the spies said no? Ten. And the children of Israel voted with the ten. For their disobedience, God caused them to wander in the wilderness. How long? Another 38 years until all those who were 20... You're going to have to do this one with me. It's going to be another long one. Until all those who were 20 years old and older had... It's not too long, so we'll do that well, right? So we're back at Mount Sinai. He leads the children of Israel where? Kadesh Barnea. They send out the 12. The spies come back and they said there's giants in the land. Two of the spies said go. The 10 of them said no. The children of Israel voted with the 10. All right, for their disobedience, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for how long? Until all those who were 20 years old and older had died. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go on from there. Um, after that, Moses led the children of Israel up along the, the Dead Sea, which is very small here from your vantage point, up along the eastern shore of the Dead Sea. And, um, and now... Was Moses going into the promised land? 
No, why not? He had struck the rock in anger, right? So he was not to go in. He was going to be allowed to see it, but he was not going to cross over into it. So uh, Moses led them up the eastern shore of the, uh, the Dead Sea, and he l led them up to Mount Nebo. Now the way I'm going to prompt you to remember that is I'm going to bring my knee up and touch my elbow with it. That's the best I got for you there. All right? To Mount Nebo, and then Moses died. All right? After Moses died, God raised up who? Joshua. Joshua led the children of Israel across the Jordan River, where they fought the battle of? Some battle, huh? They marched around a little while and shouted, and that was the end of it, right? Um, amazing how God can do whatever he wants to, and we just have to operate by faith. All right? So he fought the battle of Jericho, and they conquered the land. Then Joshua. Okay? After Joshua's death, God raised up who? Judges. Judges to rule over the various sectors of Israel. Now, how many of you have read the book of Judges? You read through the book of Judges? Well, it's a, a, a really a sad tale, isn't it? Because every time that they, that they had a judge to lead them, they did fairly well. But as soon as that judge would die, they would fall into sin, and God would have to uh, put them in bondage under a heathen nation. And finally, from all that oppression, they would finally cry out in repentance. God would raise up another judge, and then they would do fairly well as long as that judge was alive. That judge would die, and the pattern just started all over again. Uh, Samson is, is near the end of the book of Judges. Uh, so um, during that time, because of all this upheaval and all this uh, becoming somewhat righteous and then falling back into sin and going under the, uh, the uh, control of the heathen, nation, heathen nations, we're going to say that under the rule of the judges, that Israel underwent many social, economic, because they suffered that way as well, and spiritual ups and downs. All right? Under the rule of the judges, Israel underwent many social, economic, and spiritual ups and downs for a period of 450 years, longer than they were in Egypt. 450 years doing that. You know, you'd, you'd think, well, maybe 40 years and it's over with. Nope, it was a long time. All right? Finally, Israel cried, we want a king. They want what? Okay, a king. Who was the first king? Saul. Right? He kind of fell apart, didn't he? The second king was David. Who was the third king? Solomon. All right, after Solomon died, we had an issue, didn't we? After Solomon died. Because Rehoboam, his son, uh, Solomon had, uh, first of all, Solomon had placed them under terrible rigor. And, and taxes. And, um, and they were sick of it. So Rehoboam was the successor. It was, that was Solomon's son. And he was the successor. And he went to the old men to ask their, the older men to ask their uh, advice as to how he ought to proceed. And they, they uh, encouraged him to lighten up on the people. But then he talked to the young men, and the young men uh, advised him to double the, the rigor, to make it even worse. So we had a huge church split. We had a split. And the northern kingdom was formed. And ten of those tribes left and went to the north. And only two of the tribes, which were Judah and Benjamin, stayed in the south. So, you know, this is one of those areas that you have to understand uh, when you're reading uh, uh, th through Kings, uh, First and Second Kings and so on. Uh, when you, when you, all of a sudden you see there's a king of Judah and there's a king of Israel, well, what are the, what are the, how come they got two kings? Well, they're two separate nations now, after, after the split. So, all right. So, um, let's see. Um, Joshua led the children of Israel across the Jordan River, where they fought the battle of, and they possessed the land. Uh, then, uh, then Joshua... After Joshua died, God raised up judges to rule over the various sectors of Israel. Under the rule of the judges, Israel underwent many 
social, economic, and spiritual ups and downs for a period of 450 years. Finally, they cried, we want a king, right? Who was the first king? Who was the second king? Who was the third king? Solomon. After Solomon, the kingdom was divided. All right? Excellent. That's the church split. All right, now, the northern kingdom was Israel. It used to be the whole nation, but now the northern kingdom was Israel, and they had ten tribes in the north, and the capital, you can't even see this, it's so small, but it's Samaria. The capital is Samaria. The southern kingdom was Judah, and the capital is Jerusalem, and there were two tribes, um, um, Judah and Benjamin. All right? Now, uh, we're not going to get into all the detail of, of, of all the tribes, but uh, um, so following, um, following um, yeah, David and then Solomon, following S Solomon's death, the kingdom was divided, and the northern kingdom... I'm going to grab the pointer. And the northern, name of the northern kingdom is what? Israel. The capital? Samaria. Southern kingdom? Judah. Judah. The capital is Jerusalem. Now, in the northern kingdom, there were 19 kings. And not a one of them was a good king. They were all wicked kings. And in the, rather, whereas in the southern kingdom of Judah, they had 20 kings. And eight of those are classified as being good kings. Now, a couple of them were a little shaky. Uh, Asa, for example, did really well for the first 35 years of his reign, and then he kind of fell apart at the end. But he's counted as a good king because he was for quite a while. All right? Now, why, was, why did the northern kingdom have um, all these bad kings? Not a single one of them was any good. Ahab is a typical example of one. And the southern kingdom had eight good kings. Well, when the northern kingdom rebelled, they chose Jeroboam as their, as their king to begin with. And Jeroboam was not in the Davidic line, whereas Rehoboam was. And that's the reason. Um, they felt justified, of course, in, in, in uh, splitting because uh, uh, they didn't want that rigor anymore and the high taxes and everything else. But they, nonetheless, it was rebellion. All right? So, um, after Solomon's death, the kingdom was divided. The kingdom was divided. The name of the northern kingdom is Israel. The capital? Samaria. Southern kingdom? Judah. The capital? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. How many kings ruled in the north? Nineteen. How many were good kings? None. How many kings ruled in the south? Twenty. How many of those were good kings? Eight. Very good. Now, um, there's a couple dates you're going to have to remember. Uh, in 722 B.C., 722 B.C., so uh, hide that up there. 722 B.C., the northern kingdom of Israel was taken captive. Now, the, the, one who, the, the king who took them captive, captive was King Shalman-Ezer of Assyria. And there's really no easy way for you to remember Shalman Ezer, so I've got to tell you a story. All right? A 700-pound woman died. 700 pounds. When they get to the gravesite, they've got double or triple the, the pallbearers, and they've got ropes all under the casket because they've, they've got to ease her down into the grave. So they've got guys on both sides, and they're easing her down into the grave. And it's a very difficult task and because she was so heavy and they, they, they get her about halfway down and one of the pallbearers is, is heard to say, how shall a man ease her? Right? I know, I'm sorry, it's corny, but that's, that's the best I got, all right? So King Shalman Ezer, King Shalman Ezer um, took them captive back to Assyria now, I'm, then I'm going to ask you, and what happened to them? And you're going to say they were never heard of again. Right? Now, let me explain that. When he took them back to Assyria, over time they intermarried with the Gentile Assyrians. And now they're, 
the half-breeds are half Jew and half Gentile, which in Jesus' day, we knew, what were they called? The Samaritans, right? And you remember the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. So, um, so as a pure race, they were never heard of again, all right? Uh, whereas the southern kingdom, they didn't have that problem. All right, now, um, so in s what year? Seven. Seven, 722, 722 B.C. King who? Shalmaneser, Shalman right? Took them captive where? Assyria. To Assyria. And what happened to them? They were never heard of again. One more date you got to know now. In 606 B.C., and you'll know that you're more familiar with this one. Um, in 606 B.C., who took the southern kingdom captive? Nebuchadnezzar, right? That's more familiar. It, was, it always was to me. Um, and where did he take them? Over to Babylon, right? For how many years? A 70-year captivity, right? 70 years. All right? After the 70 years... God raised up, and here's our last two books in the chronology, God raised up Ezra and Nehemiah, led the captives back, and they rebuilt the wall, the temples, and the city. And then the Old Testament canon fell silent in 400 B.C. That's the end. God stopped speaking at that point for 400 years until the birth of Christ. All right? Let's go back to the kings and take it all the way through to the end. And then we're going to give it a shot from the very beginning, starting with the books of the Bible and the whole nine yards. All right, are you ready? You think, you think, I, you think we've got enough here, that, enough practice? All right, let's go back to the kings. After the judges, uh, Israel finally said, we want a king. First king was? Solomon. Second king? David. Third king. Solomon. After Solomon's death, the kingdom was right. divided. Okay, the name of the northern kingdom? Israel. And the capital? Name of the southern kingdom? Judah. The capital? Jerusalem. In what year was the northern kingdom taken captive? 722 B.C. Who took them? Shalmaneser, right? Where did he take them? Assyria. To Assyria. And what happened to them? They were never heard of again. In what year was the southern kingdom taken captive? And who took them? Nebuchadnezzar. Where did he take them? And for how many years? After the 70-year captivity, God raised up Ezra and Nehemiah. They led the captives back. They rebuilt, rebuilt the walls, the temple, and the city. And the Old Testament canon fell silent in what year? 400 B.C. Want to try it all? Let's go for it. It's, now, it's only going to take us about four minutes to get through the whole thing. All right? And then when you're reading, no matter where you're reading in the Old Testament, you'll be... You'll say, well, now this happened because of that happened, right? So that's the whole goal here. All right, everybody in good voice now. Don't get weary on me. And this, this is the finale, all right? Here we go. How many books in the Bible, class? 66. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many in the New Testament? 27. The entire chronology of the Old Testament is contained in how many books? Those books are Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra and Nehemiah. The detail of, in those, contained in those 11 books, starting with Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, creation, chapter 2, special events of creation, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, genealogies of Adam, chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah during the flood, chapter 9, Noah after the flood, chapter 10, the genealogies of Noah, chapter 11, Tower of Babel, chapter 12, call of Abraham. When God called Abraham, what did he tell him? Go to a land that I will show thee and will make of thee a great nation. So Abraham, sorry for the junk, packed his bag, traveled up the to which was, all right, the people that traveled to Haran with Abraham formed the word? So, salt stands for Sarah, Abraham, Lot, and Terah. They lived in Haran how many years? 30. Until Terah? After Terah died, Sarah, Abraham, Ham, and Lot moved to where? When they got there, Sarah and Abraham had a problem. What was it? No kids. So Sarah and Hagar made a deal, and Abraham and Hagar begat who? Was Ishmael the son of promise? No. Fourteen years later, Sarah and Abraham begat who? 
Was Isaac the son of promise? Yes. Isaac and Rebekah begat the twins, Jacob and Esau. Was Esau the son of promise? Was Jacob the son of promise? Yes. Jacob had how many sons? And a daughter named? One of Jacob's sons' name was? Who had the? What happened to Joseph? He was sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. But Joseph prospered in Egypt for how many years? 30 years. Uh, then there came a famine on the land, and Jacob and the rest of the Israelites were forced to move where? To get? All right. Then Pharaoh. After Pharaoh died, the new Pharaoh was fearful of the children of Israel. So he placed them in for how many years? Finally, God raised up. What did Moses say? Let my people go. Did he let them go? So God caused the miracle of the? After the plagues, what did Pharaoh say? Go. So Moses led the children of Israel across the? To Mount where they received the law and spent two years there studying it, right? All right, then Moses, after the two years, Moses led the children of Israel northward to Kadesh Barnea. He sent out the twelve. The spies came back and said, there's... But two of the spies said, go. The ten said, no. The children of Israel voted with the... For their disobedience, God called them to wander in the wilderness another... Year, until all those who were... Hold on, the head died, all right? Then Moses led the children of Israel up the eastern shore of the Dead Sea to Mount And Moses, then God raised up Joshua. Joshua led the children of Israel across the... And they fought the battle of... And they possessed the land. Then Joshua. Then Moses, wherever my gavel went. <laughs> I lost it. Uh, after Joshua's death... Israel came under the rule of the judges. <laughs> under the rule of the judges, Israel underwent many social, economic, and spiritual ups and downs for a period of 450 years. Finally, they cried, we want a... Who was the first king? Who was the second king? Who was the third king? After Solomon's death, the kingdom was... The northern kingdom is... Capital? Samaria. Southern kingdom is... Capital is how many kings in the north? How many of those were good kings? Zero. How many kings in the south? Twenty. How many of those were good kings? Eight. All right. In what year was the northern kingdom taken captive? 722 B.C., right? What year was it? 722 B.C. Who took them? Shalmaneser. Where did he take them? It was Syria. And what happened to them? They were never heard of again. What year was the southern kingdom taken captive? 06 B.C. Who took him? Nebuchadnezzar. Where did he take him? Babylon. And, and uh, for how long? 70 years. After the 70-year captivity, uh, God raised up who? Ezra and Nehemiah. They brought the captives back. They re rebuilt the walls, the city, and the temple. And the Old Testament canon fell silent in what year? 400 B.C. Good job. Good job. Phew. And I'm glad I didn't have my coat on. <laughs> I'm warm enough. All right, I want to thank you so much uh, for that. I hope it'll be profitable for you going forward. If anybody wants a copy of that, I'll be glad to give it to you and uh, make, print, print some off and give it to you. Uh, there's a good piece of this. If you just want to peek in your Bible from time to time, there's a, great, a good piece of this, good chunk of it, in Acts chapter 7, where Stephen makes his defense and and uh, eventually winds up being stoned there. He really preaches it there. So, um, all right. Uh, thank you very much. And. Uh